Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to make a natural shower gel from scratch using a hot process liquid soap making method. In this video today, I'm gonna to be going over my step-by-step -step visual process and tutorial of how to put together this luxurious yet simple ingredient from scratch shower gel. If you would like the full recipe with percentages so you can scale up or down as you like and a full written detailed step-by-step -step tutorial that you can download and keep, please head on over to my Patreon campaign. You'll be able to unlock this formula at just the $5 level. Not only will you be able to unlock today's formula at the $5 level, but you'll be able to unlock over 400 posts. There are hundreds of recipes and tutorials to take advantage of just at the $5 level. I've been posting weekly, sometimes twice weekly, tutorials over there now for four years. There's so much to take advantage of, including coupon codes to my favorite suppliers like makesy.com and onlinelabels.com. We're a community of about 3,000 makers. It's a great way to connect with me. It's a great way to connect with other makers. I'll go ahead and place the link to my campaign in the description box below. All right, let's get started. Okay, so you guys have probably seen me do this before if you're familiar with my channel. I have made hot process liquid soaps before, including some very popular body washes and shower gels. So we are gonna be doing this using the crock pot. So in this crock pot here, I have a combination of melted down and warmed up olive oil, sunflower oil, castor oil, coconut oil. So what we're going to do is go ahead and prepare our lye and water solution. So for hot process liquid soap making, you use potassium hydroxide lye, not sodium hydroxide lye. All right, so in this container here, I have some distilled water, and then we're just going to go ahead and weigh off our lye and create a lye and water solution. Also, when you're working with any type of lye, you should be wearing gloves, long sleeves. We're gonna be putting goggles on here too. And that way you're protecting yourself from the caustic material. And also we wanna be ready to place this into the crock pot very shortly after this is made because we want everything to be very hot. And it's interesting, you're gonna hear a whooshing sound when the potassium hydroxide mixes with the water. It's pretty cool. All right, listen. So right away, this lye solution gets very hot and puts off fumes. So just make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And we're just gonna give this a minute to dissolve. before we combine it with our melted oils here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pour the hot potassium hydroxide and water solution into the melted oils. This is a labor of love because we're gonna go ahead and blend this with the immersion blender and we're gonna blend until we reach a trace with this particular formula, that can take a few minutes because you don't want to overheat your stick blender. So we're going to take turns stick blending and then stirring by hand until we've reached a very thick trace. And I'll try to take you through that process the best that I can. So we're just going to go ahead and add in the... As you can see, it's already starting to emulsify. it's very important to be wearing gloves, long sleeves, and goggles. Um, you definitely want to protect your body and your eyes from anything that may splatter up out of the crock pot. So 
see how we're getting a lot of bubbles in here? You definitely want a stick blender that, or you definitely want a crock pot, I mean, that can accommodate the volume that you're putting in here because it will grow a little bit as the oils and lye are really hot. So it is gonna grow and expand a little bit. Just be prepared for that. Now I'm just using my spatula to hand stir just to give my stick blender a break. And I will bring you back when this has thickened up and we're ready for the next step. Okay, so we've thickened up just a little bit. We're still rather liquidy, um, but while I'm hand stirring, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the benefits of this type of soap making is that you can make an all natural product. If you're using essential oils to fragrance your soap or no fragrance, this can be a completely all natural product. And it's just an amazing process. The whole thing is pretty magical. So that's the benefit. Um, some, some of the cons about this type of product is that it does take a long time to make and you do have to practice patience. Um, but you can make a big batch of paste like we're doing here ahead of time. And then the diluting process you can do whenever because you can store the paste indefinitely. And that will make more sense to you as we move along. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this another blend with my stick blender and just try to bring it up. We're trying to bring it up to a very thick trace. And this formula goes through sort of like a mashed potato phase before it thickens up. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. It looks like mashed potatoes. Now, it's perfectly okay to put the lid on this, which is what I'm gonna do in a second, and allow it to just heat up for about 10 minutes, and then you can come back and check on it. We have achieved trace. We're just not at the consistency yet to start cooking the paste, so we do have to cook it for three hours once we've reached a very thick trace, meaning we can no longer stick blend it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the lid on this and I'm just, just gonna set a 10 minute timer and allow it to warm up and I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so it's been cooking now for about 10 minutes. As you can see, it does kind of puff up when it's cooking like that before it's reached trait like all the way to the thick trace that you want it to that's okay you just want to stir it out if you notice that that's it's doing that you want to watch it and make sure that you just kind of stir it out uh, that way it won't come out up over the top but again just making sure you're using a crock pot that's definitely big enough to hold the batch that you're making. So you want your crock pot to be double the size. So as you can see, it's starting to thicken up a little bit here. And we're just gonna go ahead and give this a stick blend. And see if we can't get it to a real thick trace. So we are, we are almost there. You just want to, you just want to keep cooking it and stirring it by hand and with your stick blender until you can no longer stick blend and we're getting very close. All right, so we have reached a very thick trace. All I did was take my stick blender out and just hand stir it again for another minute or so. And as you can see, it's gotten up to a very thick trace that you can no longer stick blend. So now we need to place the lid on this and we need to cook this paste for three hours. 
that is a necessary step to this process because what we're doing is we're cooking off the excess lye. And you definitely wanna do that to make sure your paste goes to neutral. You want a neutral paste when the cook is all the way done and then that way you'll be ready to make your liquid soap. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and allow it to cook for three hours and then you stir it, you know, every now and again, you come in and you stir it and you break up the paste a little bit just so that the heat evenly distributes through the whole formula. And luckily I have a prior batch of paste that I made so that we can move right along to the next step while this paste cooks. I'll bring you back for that. Okay, so what I have here is some already pre-made soap paste. This is the same formula that we're making um, in the crock pot off to the side here, but this is just a batch of soap paste that I previously made. I wanted it ready for today's video, but when your paste is done cooking, it should look like this. Beautiful, a little bit transparent, golden, amber colored, and then you take this concentrate and you dilute it with some distilled water, and then this will dilute and you have your liquid soap. So that's in essence how this works. But each formula is a little bit different regarding how much soap paste you use to how much water you use. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off one pound of soap paste and then I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so we've weighed off one pound of this beautiful neutral soap paste and now it's time to go ahead and dilute it. So we're gonna be diluting it with three pounds of distilled water. Now, like what I said earlier, each formula is a little bit different. Some require less water to dilute, some require more water to dilute. I find this formula is great with three parts water, one part paste. You still get a very concentrated, beautiful shower gel when all is said and done. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off. This is very, very hot, almost boiling distilled water. It does tend to dissolve a bit faster if your water is hot. All right. And then you're just gonna take a spatula and kind of break up the soap paste a little bit here. So you can also do this phase in the crock pot like if your paste is, um, if you just finished up a batch of paste and you wanna go ahead and dilute it and right away, you can do that in the crock pot and keep it warm with the lid on until all of this dilutes because that kind of hastens the process a little bit. Um, this process does take a long time to dilute so I'm just breaking up my soap paste a little bit and getting it into smaller chunks. That way it'll melt a little bit or dissolve a little bit easier into the distilled water. There we go. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is cover this and allow it to dissolve. And you could do that, you know, you could, that process can go overnight if you like. So I already have some diluted soap paste and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like after it's all diluted. All right, so here's some diluted soap paste. Essentially, it's just a very, very thin kind of golden colored liquid soap. So this is what it looks like after it's diluted and down to room temperature. So this has been sitting, you know, overnight or so. And I'm just gonna show you how to make one 10 ounce bottle of shower gel. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off 10 ounces. This, it'll be a little bit more than 10 ounces once we put in our additives. But I'm weighing off 10 ounces of liquid soap. Now you could of course scale this up and you can make a big batch just depends on how much paste you dilute. So you can do the whole thing um, if you like, or you can portion off bits of paste like I showed you earlier 
and dilute down as much or as little as you like. Once you make your paste, it's very versatile. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off 10 ounces of this liquid soap. Again, it's just a very, very thin, you, you don't have to do anything else with it. Technically, you could just use it as is. Um, but I like to add fragrance and I also like to add some thickening agents. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So the next thing we're gonna do is place some additives into this beautiful liquid soap that we have here. And before we do that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the pH. So the final pH of this type of soap is going to be around a nine or even a little bit higher. It's much like a cold process soap bar because we're using lye. Um, there's just no way to lower it. So, you know, if you want something lower, take a look at some surfactant based shower gels there's a lot of them over on my patreon campaign but in this type of product we're not going to get a ph lower than than a nine if you do lower it with citric acid you can cause a couple different things to happen so citric acid usually we use that in soap not to lower the ph but as a buffering or chelating agent so it helps prevent soap scum in your shower and on your cold process soap bars and things like that. However, adding citric acid to this formula in particular, you can add a little bit to these types of formulas as a buffering agent, but if you add too much of it, and some formulas don't take it very well, some formulas like this one, if you add a citric acid solution to it, what happens is it lowers the pH into a range where some of the oils become unsaponified. So what that means is your formula is then gonna be cloudy and milky looking because you've now unsaponified some of those oils and they are floating freely into your formula. That's okay, but in this case, I'm going for a very clear shower gel type formula. And sometimes if you get that pH too low, you can do that with citric acid. Your soap will just fall out of solution and it will no longer be a homogenous soap blend like we have here. So I'm opting not to use any citric acid in this formula today. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and add in some glycerin. Now, vegetable glycerin is gonna add some nice foam and lather. It's gonna boost the foam and lather in this formula, but it also is a very nice humectant, which means it's gonna draw moisture to your skin. Okay. We're gonna give that a little bit of a stir. And I'm gonna try not to kick up so many bubbles here. And then next we're gonna be adding in some fragrance oil. Now this is also a place where you need to do a testing. If you're gonna use a different fragrance than I'm using here today, you're gonna to need to do your own testing on a small bit of soap um, to make sure that it doesn't react negatively. So any soap with vanillin or any fragrance with vanillin or vanilla in it is gonna cause it to go dark brown and some fragrances don't react very well, meaning they're gonna make your soap go very thick or ultra thin, or they can, they can make your formula go cloudy instantaneously. So I recommend, if you wanna use something different than what I'm using here, test out a small bit of fragrance on a little bit of soap, like 10 grams of soap, um, into a little container, put a little bit of fragrance oil in it and see how it reacts because you're going to notice too with this one i'm using nirvana by nurture soap it smells really good it's kind of got some top citrusy notes just gorgeous soft finish um, it's a beautiful kind of spring and summer floral and citrus type uh, fragrance this one will turn the soap a little bit thick and a little bit cloudy but then it goes away so you're going to see that right off the bat when i add this in Okay. And then I'm just gonna give this a good stir. Now you're gonna notice my formula is gonna go a bit cloudy right off the bat. And that's just the fragrance oil combining with my soap. That, this is a temporary 
So we're just gonna give that a good stir, make sure the fragrance is all mixed in. Now you could also, you're gonna need to do testing if you do this, but you could also just use essential oil and keep this a completely natural formula. Okay, so there we go. We have still a very, very thin formula. So we need to go ahead and thicken this up. And what's awesome about today's formula is it doesn't require the use of any type of commercial thickener. We're gonna be using a 20% salt water solution. So this is 20% sea salt and 80% distilled water. Sea salt, table salt, it doesn't matter. It's gonna thicken it up whichever one you decide to use. So we're just gonna pour, and you can pour and use this solution and stir it in bit by bit until you get your desired thickness. I'm going for a shower gel type thickness. It is easy to overdo it, so just make sure you pour in a little bit at a time, stir it before each addition. Now, salt water solution is not going to work with every formula like this. Um, you guys may have seen how to thicken liquid soap, a video that I made a while ago. I'll link it in the description box. It shows you different ways to thicken your soap and a salt water solution doesn't always work. If you have a high coconut oil content, you're never gonna get it thickened up with salt. Okay, so we're starting to build some viscosity. I'll try not to get so many bubbles in there. Okay, so as you can see, we are starting to build some nice viscosity here. So I'm gonna keep adding in little bits of my salt water solution until I get the viscosity I want, and I'll bring you back to show you the result. Okay, so I'm back to show you the final viscosity after I've added in my salt water solution. It's just a gorgeous kind of shower gel type consistency. It will get a little bit thinner as all the bubbles settle out over the next day or so. So the last thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and bottle this up. So I'm pouring this into an eight ounce PET um, bullet bottle, but this holds about 10 fluid ounces. There's just a little bit left over. And there you go, that's how you make a beautiful shower gel, natural. I wanted to show you too how it looks after it's settled out. So as you can see, this one is completely clear. It's got very nice viscosity. So after a few hours, this will look like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out with a little lather demo. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of a lather demonstration here. So. A note as well, with this type of soap, if you allow it to sequester or cure for about a week, three days to a week, your lather is gonna improve. So if you think it's a little bit weak or small, when you first test it, give it about a week and it does improve. So a loofah is gonna also help increase the lather, but this is a very kind of dense, foaming, 
creamy feeling lather. Again, with the ability to use all these oils, that's something too that's also a benefit of making this type of soap is you can use oils. So you do get the benefits of using the oils in the soap as well. But it's just got a very beautiful, silky, kind of dense foaming lather. Feels really nice. Smells gorgeous. And that's it everybody. That's how you make a beautiful shower gel, all natural from scratch. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please leave me comments and questions below. Share this video with a friend and why not subscribe to my channel? All right, everybody, catch you on the next video. Bye.